This is Casey, and I cover Blood and Treasure for so many shows. I'm talking with one of the creators, Stephen Skaya. Thanks for coming on to the show to talk to us today. No problem. I'm happy to be here. I would like to start off by saying uh, thank you for live tweeting the shows and giving the fans a behind-the-scenes look at productions. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I love TV like everybody else, and I think it's really cool when you can be watching and getting all those really cool behind-the-scenes uh, fun facts because really the truth is we had as much fun making the show as it is to watch. So it's great to be able to share that with everybody. It's great because a lot of the pictures that you had posted early on in production, we get to see in the episodes now. And it's a great look, especially the uh, one with the Sophia uh, riding the motorcycle. That was a great shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a, that was, that's really funny that you mentioned that I, you know, my Instagram is full of all of the behind the scenes shots that out of context kind of don't make any sense. They're just sort of interesting places and locations. And so now it's fun. People have said they've gone sort of back through my account to try to figure out what episode each thing is from sort of shot in, in, in and out of order. So it's, it's not exactly sequential, but it's, it's, it's a fun game for people to play, I guess. Yes, it is. Uh, you had tweeted during the first episode uh, for fans to look for movie references. And I actually got to like, feel like we were going on a treasure hunt, uh, just like the, the cast was. And it was great. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing that we love about the show is being able to do a show that takes place in enough of our real world where it's a treasure hunt show where everybody in the treasure hunt show has seen treasure hunt stuff. Like, it, to us, it just felt right that they're, they're living in a world where there was a national treasure in Indiana Jones. And, like, I think when someone says, hey, there were Nazis in that tomb, Danny's response is appropriate, which is like, what? That's amazing. Mm. This is surreal. Yeah, it was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun to, to go on that treasure hunt with, uh, with the cast as well. Uh, one of the things that I tweeted about was how amazing the cast is. And I think you had mentioned that uh, it was Elizabeth Barnes who helped cast the show. And I think she did great because the cast just works so well together. Yeah, I mean, look, Matt and I have worked on a lot of shows, uh, Fetterman and I, and, you know, some casts are better than others. And it really is about assembling a team that really plays well together because what, especially what we're going to ask everyone to do for this show specifically is, you know, everyone's got to be as good on day one on a soundstage in Montreal where you've got bathrooms and delicious craft services as you have to be on day 138 when you're in the middle of the Sahara Desert and there's maybe not as much of those things, those creature comforts. And so we really tried to choose people who were up for the adventure. We love working with people um, again, which is, you know, how we, we came back to Mike Shaw and, uh, and we made some new friends along the way where, you know, I couldn't imagine anybody else playing all those parts. Yeah, they have such great chemistry on screen. It really shows. Uh, you had mentioned shooting in Montreal, and you had also shot on location mm -hmm. in Rome and Morocco, correct? Yes. In addition to that, we, so we started, um, production started here in Montreal. I'm, I'm actually here in Montreal right now finishing post-production. We started production here basically a year ago. So I think we're almost the one-year anniversary. And we shot through the summer here in Montreal, and we wrapped up sometime around the middle of October. Then we packed up the whole show, uh, flew to Rome. We shot in Rome for three or so weeks, basically a month. And then the whole show packed up again, and we went to Turin and uh, shot there for about a week or so. That's where mm -hmm. the Nazi castle was. We, we, we went up into the Alps, and also the Nazi train from the last episode was a train station in Saluzzo. Um, mm -hmm. And then the whole gang, aside from... Me, Matt, and Sophia, and a couple camera ops, and hair and makeup, and we, everybody else went to Morocco, and we mm -hmm. took a really small skeleton crew to Venice, and you'll see Venice show up in the season later on, uh, which was amazing to shoot in Venice, Italy on a, you know, on an old wooden boat. It was just like Last Crusade, and <laughs> um, and then we we all loaded up on a on a plane, flew to Marrakesh, met the crew there shot in Marrakesh through Thanksgiving and into December. And then our last stop was Tangier, where we finished out the, the, the season right before Christmas. So we all, we all basically landed wherever we were from the day before Christmas. And that was the end of production. Wow, you spent all over. <laughs> so shooting um, it, it, in different it, places. It really like was this. an incredible adventure. Yeah. Shooting in, in different places like this, you would have to shoot the show out of sequence then, right? Yeah, I mean, it was really interesting because we'd never done a show like this before, and CBS hadn't either. So we were 
we were relying on sort of the institutional memory of our awesome producers up here in Montreal, this company News, and specifically, specifically Irene Lekinsky, who's who has shot all over the world, and she really is the, is the best there is, and, and put together an amazing crew here that could roll with it. And the way, the best way we found to make the show was to shoot everything in Montreal as much in sequence as we could. So we would shoot in blocks of two, which is why when you watch the show, you'll see, you know, episode two and three are directed by Oliver Riley, episode four and five are directed by Tanya, and, and so on and so on. It's not that those episodes are necessarily cliffhangers that are one story each. The whole mm-hmm. story is an arc, and the reason why directors do two at a time is because we would shoot in blocks of two. So it just gave us a little bit more freedom. So instead of shooting just one script, we shoot two at a time and a lot of the block shoot locations and, and spots around town, and we just got a lot more bang for our buck that way. And mm-hmm. then when we left Montreal, we just shot whatever we could when we could. So we, we stopped shooting in block. We just started to fill in the gaps of, of stuff in episodes that hadn't been shot yet. The directors would meet us wherever in the world we were, and they would take up their work, and they would shoot, like, uh, Tanya, who came and met us in Rome, got there at the very end of our Rome shoot. She shot a scene in the Vatican Library with Chuck, and then we all got on a train and went up to uh, Turin, and then she shot at the train station in the castle, and then she was done because she had no more office. And so Guy B, who shot towards the end of the run, he didn't shoot anything in, in Italy. He came and met us in Marrakesh, and so it was, it was a lot about, like, people coming and going. Um, right. throughout the adventure. After Sue, right. after which was a lot of fun, because you'd see people you hadn't seen in a couple of months, and James Callis specifically would come back and forth because he wasn't there as consistently as everybody else, so he didn't have to stay, but he did come and go enough that uh, we got into a good rhythm where uh, James was an awesome adventure buddy that every time we were someplace strange, he would reach out to me with an email before he got on a plane and ask what I needed, and almost invariably it was a good bottle of bourbon. And so he would be my bourbon mule and uh, and meet me somewhere strange in, in North Africa with a with a really great bottle of bourbon. We we drink really well on the road. Nice. <laughs> now, since it wasn't continuous, um, was there any issue with keeping up with um, the continuity since you had like months of difference? Well, it's, it's always different, difficult on any show, but mm-hmm. specifically for us, we were very mindful of it from the beginning. And so even when we were in we were prepping stuff in, Mar- in, in uh, Montreal, knowing that they were, there would literally be a scene where they would be, uh, let's say, take the, um, the episode three, which was the, the episode where they, um, they're standing in front of the pyramid in Rome, right. and then they walk across, the, and uh, Danny and SM walk into a, run into a building, and they have a, a gunfight. Mm-hmm. So the, the pyramid scene we shot on the street in Rome in, at the end of November, or I'm sorry, the end of October, but before that we had shot the actual shootout that comes next, we shot that in at the beginning of July in Montreal. And so mm-hmm. everybody had to be very clear about specifically things like uh, not just costumes, but props and guns. Guns were actually really difficult because we knew certain things you could not take into Morocco. And so uh, oh, okay. our members here in Montreal were really great because they knew what they could and couldn't take with them to Morocco or what we couldn't get in Morocco. And so we reverse engineered it, so we make sure whatever we use here had a match in Morocco before mm-hmm. we ever got. Oh wow! Uh, now, was it hard to sell the studio on shooting on on location? We, I mean, I think I think that CBS took a big risk on <clears throat> the show, but but a risk that they were looking forward to. I think that you know, generally people who watch CBS maybe wouldn't necessarily know that this is a show that's for them, but I think what's great about it is the, is the enthusiasm everybody has their network in the studio for this kind of a show, a big mm-hmm. giant summer blockbuster on TV. And right. they also recognize that the way to make that clear to people was to let us get the show on the road. And so every version of the summer blockbuster on TV show, once you start developing it with CBS, always had some component of traveling the world. It was just a question of how far and where and when and uh, and that's something we dialed in as we went through the process and after the pickup and I mean even even in even probably three months before we started shooting so deep into into prep for the show we were still planning on going to someplace like Croatia mm-hmm. or Serbia to shoot a lot of the stuff and when we realized we had a lot more Middle Eastern desert and um, Caribbean locations 
that's when we shifted over to Morocco. Because uh, okay. believe it or not, Tangier makes an makes an excellent double for places like Cuba and uh, and the Bermuda Triangle. It just makes the show look so much more authentic. It's great. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that was a that was a real goal of Fetterman and me, where we were we were talking about how you can really see a difference. Like green screen serves its purpose, but I think for a show like this, it's got to feel real, and it's got to feel real the way Raiders of the Lost Ark feels real, and the way Crystal Skull doesn't feel real. We want we wanted Raiders. We wanted to look like they really went there and had this adventure. And we also wanted the, the verisimilitude of when you're there and things don't go exactly as planned. We always talk a lot about how the things that you plan for are great, but the things that you don't plan for are even better. And so I always think about my favorite moment in any movie, even Raiders, when uh, Indian Jones shoots the swordsman. And mm-hmm. if you know anything about that movie and the way it was made, you know that that was not supposed to happen. That was supposed yeah. to be days of a fight scene, and Harrison Ford was just too sick to do it, and so he just said, can I just shoot the guy? And one of the greatest moments in movie history is made. Right. Speaking of things that aren't supposed to happen, I was wondering, while shooting, have there been any improv moments that were so good you had to leave them in? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of a lot of the chemistry that our cast has with each other. You can mm-hmm. script it, but you you can't make that happen. You can't write chemistry into a script. And to me, there is a moment um, in that in that actually that in that shootout in episode three when they're um, they're battling with Farouk's guys. There's a really subtle moment there that is uh, Lexi with an AK-47 blasting away, and Danny kind of peeking around the corner, and he he catches her, sees right. her doing it, seeing how awesome and fun it is, and he can't help but smile. And to me, like. It's those little moments like that that are just so great. Fantastic. That's great. I know you're busy, but I have one more question. Would you be able to answer? Sure. Yeah. Great. So you mentioned quite a bit that uh, there are movie references in the show, and now it's my turn. I'm wondering if there has yeah. been any particularly difficult day while shooting where you needed to MacGyver something to get the shot off. Oh, yes. I mean, <laughs> nearly every day because you've never had enough time and there's never enough daylight, and there's something breaks, you lose the generator. No matter where you are in the world, no matter how good your crew is, you are at the mercy of the, the filmmaking gods every time. And every time right. you step outside, you're taking, you're taking that risk. And I, I remember we were in Tangier. It was towards the end of our shoot, so we had very few things left that we could shoot. And it was, it was supposed to be a chase, a foot chase through the streets of Havana was the scene. But it was pouring okay. rain. So not only was it, you know, were there two inches of rain all over the market we were in, but also you can't shoot because it, it's not only dangerous, it doesn't look anything like Cuba because it's pouring down rain. And right. so we're waiting for the rain to stop, and as we're waiting an hours and hours to five of, of a film crew just sitting there doing nothing, and our day is getting away from us, and we know it's, you know, it's, it's wintertime, so the sun's going to set early. We knew we had less time to shoot the chase, but also we – we had all these extra things we had to shoot and we, we didn't know when we were going to be able to get them. And so we had this moment where in the pouring rain, we, we huddled up uh, with me and the, the director of that piece and Irene, our producer and, and some of the other crew members. And we looked at the board of what we still had left to shoot. And we had this little tiny piece of Danny and Lexi landing at the Vatican in the parachute. And it was just a really, really small moment that we hadn't been able to shoot yet, which was, the two of them underneath the parachute in episode, it would be the top of episode two. We realized, okay, so we're going to lose the sun. It's the only nighttime scene we have left to shoot. All we need is grass and a parachute. And so we mm-hmm. sent our prop guy out into the, the souk of Tangier, and we said, come back, come back with about you know four feet square of astroturf and um, a silk parachute. And he did. He came back, and so we, we took down – the set that was there, um, we shot we, so that, you know, the rain stopped, but we had to shoot a very quick version of the chase because we lost our light. And then once we lost our light, we kept shooting. We, uh, we took down the set that was there in the middle of the market, and we, uh, we stapled some astroturf to it, and uh, we shot that, in, that entire piece in the middle of the, um, the marketplace in Tangier in the middle of the night. And it looks great, and you never know that that's where we did it. It looks like we did it right at the Vatican. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Something to look forward to on the episode. (laughs) Uh, Well, thank you very much for taking the time. Yes, it is.
thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. And uh, thank you everyone for listening and watching and being a fan and tell a friend. Yes, definitely. If you're not watching, tune into Blood and Treasure Tuesdays on CBS.